Hi, I'm Chelsea of Friday Pattern Company and today we have another sew along for you. This week we're going to be making the sport shorts which is our latest PDF pattern release and this pattern is really special because it's actually a free slash pay what you can pattern. So um, on the website and we'll link it down below, uh, you just on the product page you select what price you want to pay. We have some options there for you and one of them is free and we invite you to take the pattern for free um, or contribute if you can slash want to and you'll just select your price check out and the files will be emailed to you and it has everything that our normal patterns have in it um, the print at home version that you tape together it has the copy shop sized file the instructions and it also has like our mobile friendly instructions so it's pretty cool and I hope that people take advantage of it and have fun sewing because it is a fun sewing pattern um here's the shorts that we're making today so they're uh woven shorts that are brought in at the waist with elastic and there's a drawstring um the edges are bound with bias tape and this is pretty fun the way they come together i think is really fun and totally approachable for a beginner sewist um yeah so we'll take you step by step through the process of sewing these babies and Let's get started. For your shorts, you'll want two different fabrics, a main fabric and a contrasting fabric. For my main fabric, I chose this rayon chalet. This is from Workroom Social and you can link it down below. Uh, it'll give it a nice drapey feel. And then this is for the contrasting fabric is the waistband, the drawstring and the binding. And this is a Tana Lawn, a Liberty of London fabric. And it's 100% cotton. Before we get started with sewing, there is some prep that we need to do. And the first thing we're gonna do is mark buttonholes on the right side of our front waistband piece. You wanna make sure you're doing it on the right side of the fabric. And I like to fold the pattern piece so that I can see the top and bottom of the buttonhole. And I'm using the notch to make sure that I have my piece like lined up correctly on the fabric. And then you can just use whatever marking tool you have to mark your buttonholes. Next you'll need to cut a two inch by four inch piece of fusible interfacing and then fuse that onto the front waistband piece behind where you marked the buttonholes. There are circle marks that need to be marked on the front and back on your front and back pieces and these will be marked on the right side of your fabric. I like to stick a pin into the circle and then that will mark the placement. And then I lift up the pattern piece and kind of carefully make my mark underneath it. And then you also, you need to do this on both front pieces and both back pieces. And finally, you'll need to cut a length of waistband elastic. We have suggested elastic lengths for each sizes in the instruction, but you can also just kind of stretch a piece of elastic around your waist and add an extra inch for seam allowance and use that for your waistband elastic. For step one, you'll need your four pieces of shorts binding E and we're gonna sew these into two long strips of binding. So right sides together, you'll sew two short shorts binding E pieces together and then you'll repeat with the other set so that you have two long binding pieces. After you've sewn them, you can press that diagonal seam open and here's what they look like finished. We'll set these aside for later. Now you're gonna sew your two drawstring H pieces together, right sides together at one of the shorts, short ends and then you'll press that seam open and here is that finished. This next step involves a lot of pressing. So first you'll grab your pocket binding D pieces and you're gonna fold them in half lengthwise and press them in half and then you'll fold the raw edges inward so that they meet that crease and then you'll press again and we're pressing this into a binding so that the raw edges are folded inward. We're going to use the same method to uh, press our shorts binding E pieces both lengths and our drawstring H piece. Um, we'll all be pressed in half lengthwise and then fold the raw edges into the crease and pressed again. 
This process can be made a lot quicker if you have a bias tape maker. These aren't a very expensive notion and I find that it's something that I use a lot. So it is worth investing in if you like to sew. Here's what it looks like and basically you just feed the bias tape or your drawstring through and it guides it under the iron so that it presses it folds those edges under and then you can just run it under your iron nicely and make binding or drawstrings in a GIF. These guys come in different sizes, but if you want one for this project, you'll get an 18 millimeter one, which is three quarters of an inch. And then once you have those edges pressed in, whatever method you use, you'll want to fold your pieces in half again so that you um, so everything is enclosed and then just give it one final press so that it is ready to sew with. Now we'll prep our drawstring. So you're going to grab that drawstring H piece that you sewed the two pieces together and you pressed it. We're folding the raw ends inward and just clipping them or pinning them in place. And then we're going to edge stitch across the top of our drawstring all the way down and then across the other side. And you'll just do that by sewing about an eighth of an inch from that open edge. Here's an edge stitched drawstring and we'll just set this aside for later. For step five, you'll grab your pocket C pieces and we're gonna finish the outer curved edge of our pockets. I'm gonna use a serger for this you could use a zigzag stitch, you could bind these with bias tape, whatever your preferred finishing method is. So here's what that looks like finished, and you'll repeat that for both pockets. For this next step, you'll need your pocket binding D pieces and your front A pieces, and we're gonna join the pocket binding to the front along this diagonal edge. So you have your pre-pressed pocket, pre -pressed pocket binding. <laughs> And you're going to wrap it around the raw edge of your front along this diagonal edge and you'll just pin it or clip it in place. And you might have a little bit of extra binding length on this and that will be, that's fine. You can just trim that off later. Once you have that secured in place, we'll take it over to the sewing machine and we'll edge stitch it. So we'll sew one eighth from that folded edge and repeat on both sides. Here is that finished and I think it looks so cute. <laughs> um, now we're going to join our pocket to our front piece. So we have our pockets the uh, whose curved edges we finished in the, a couple steps ago and that gets pinned behind our front A piece. So the right side of the pocket is facing the wrong side of our front A and we will match up notches along the top and side of our front pieces. And then we'll take this over to the machine and we'll baste these together just along the side and the top. The basting stitch is just a long straight stitch done a quarter of an inch from the edge and that is just kind of to hold our pocket in place until we do um, more permanent stitches to secure it and you'll repeat this on both sides. Here is what that looks like done and now we're going to flip our front pieces over so that we're looking at the wrong side and we're going to use a lot of pins to pin around the curved edge of our pocket, pinning it to the front of our shorts in preparation to edge stitch this pocket in place. So this next step will be sewn with the wrong side of the fabric facing up while you sew and you're going to sew just an eighth of an inch from the edge of your pocket following the curve all the way around and you'll repeat that on both sides. Here's what that looks like done and look how cute our pockets look. Now we can start constructing the shorts. So we'll pin our two front pieces right sides together along this curved center front seam and you'll use a 3 8 inch seam allowance to sew down that curve and then you're going to finish 
that seam and so I'll use my serger but again you'll use whatever method you used when you finished your pocket edge and then you will press it to one side you can press it to the right or press it to the left it doesn't really matter Here's that done, and then you're gonna repeat that process with your back pieces. So your two back pieces along the center seam, you'll sew them together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, and then you'll finish them, and then you will press the seam to one side. Next up, we'll join front to back of our shorts. So right sides together, you're gonna pin your front pieces to your back pieces. You'll match up the center front and center back seams and then also the inseam of your shorts. You'll sew that using a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then you'll finish that seam. After you do that, you can press that uh, inseam towards the back and now we have a very fun step. Now we're gonna add the binding to our shorts. So you can clip away um, any little extra dog ears that are left from your shorts um, from your pocket binding because um, those will get in the way in this step but grab your shorts binding pieces and we're going to pin them along the outside of our shorts so just like we did when we were sewing the pocket binding we're wrapping the raw edge with our binding and pinning or clipping it in place you'll uh, work your way down the side seam and then around the curved edge and just continue to follow the shorts as it goes across the hem and then onto the back piece and then again around that curved edge and up the other side seam so that it's all bound um, in one length of binding. Once you have it all secured in place you'll take it to your machine and you will sew edge stitch this in place by sewing an eighth of an inch from that folded edge and you want to make sure that you're catching the binding on both sides of the shorts so pinning it carefully um, will save you time in the long run if that makes sense and you'll repeat this on both sides apparently my recording cut out before I could show you pinning all the way around but here's what this looks like done and as you can see it's okay to have some extra binding you'll just clip that off on the top um, whatever extra there is there cool so now we're ready to sew our side seams and this is where those circle marks come back into play they might be hard to spot but look around for them <laughs> or pull out your pattern piece if you can't find them but we're gonna match up those circle marks on the front and the back we're overlapping the front over the back Unless you have a reason that you'd rather have the back over the front, it, do, it honestly doesn't matter, but you're gonna match those circle marks. And that is going to be where our side seam ends. Then keeping that overlap of the binding, you are going to pin up your shorts up to the waist. So I'm just overlapping the binding so it's sitting, the two layers are sitting directly on top of each other. And then we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and sew it. So we're over at the sewing machine to give you a little bit more of a visual of how this step is sewn. You're sewing through, like you're sewing your front to your back with the bindings overlapped. So we start by, at the waist, we'll sew down one side of our binding, catching the other binding underneath an eighth of an inch from the edge. When you get, when you approach the pin that marks the end of your side seam where those circle marks are, you'll back stitch. Then you're going to pivot so you'll lower your needle, you'll lift up your presser foot, turn your project, lower your presser foot, and then you can sew across the binding and then you'll pivot again when you get to the other side of the binding, so just a few stitches. Then you'll start your next seam with a back stitch. Um, and then you'll edge stitch your way up the other side of your binding. And this side, will, you'll be sewing on top of a stitch that you already made when you sewed your binding to your shorts piece. And then you'll repeat this process on the other side. And here are our side seams sewn up. And those were a couple of really big steps. But now we're in the home stretch because all we need to really do is add the waistband. So. Um, if you made it this far, 
you're almost there. You almost got shorts. <laughs> So grab your waistband front A and we will add buttonholes to where we marked them on the front and you just follow your sewing machine's instructions to sew these buttonholes and then we can open them. I do this with um, by placing a pin at the end of the buttonhole to protect the end of it and then I just use a seam ripper to open it up and the pin stops it from like blasting through the other side and ripping your buttonhole open. So you'll do that with both buttonholes. And then we'll pin our front and back waistbands together, right sides together on the side seams, the short seams, and you'll sew those using a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then press them open. Here you can see I pressed those side seams open and then I folded the waistband in half lengthwise all the way around with the wrong sides together. And now we have our waistband pressed into a loop that will create a casing for the elastic to go through. So we'll pin it right sides together to our shorts. And the right side of the waistband is the side that has the buttonholes on it. So the buttonholes straddle the center front seam. You also have a notch there that matches up with a notch at center front and then the side seams of your waistband match up over your overlapped um, binding and then there's a notch at center back that also matches up on the shorts with the center back seam. The center back seam matches up with a notch on the waistband as well. <laughs> Sorry, tongue twisters. Once you have that all pinned in place, you'll take it to the sewing machine and you're gonna sew it using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You're gonna leave a two inch opening along your seam so that we can feed the waistband elastic through. So make sure that you leave a little two inch opening. Here that is sewn and I went ahead and pressed the waistband up and the seam allowance down towards the shorts. And now we're going to feed the waistband elastic through our waistband. So you should have cut that length earlier during the prep phase of the shorts making. And what you do is attach a safety pin to the end of the elastic. And then you can feed that elastic through that opening that you left in your seam allowance. And you can use the safety pin to kind of inch it along through the waistband casing or the waistband. And make sure as you're pulling it through that you're not twisting the elastic because if it gets twisted and sewn, then you'll feel it when you're wearing it and it won't be any good. So you'll just inch this along until you can pull it out the other side. And then once you've pulled it out the other side and you've made sure that it's not twisted anywhere along the way, you can join the two ends of your elastic together. You'll overlap them by a half inch and then you'll sew using a zigzag stitch. Um, sew them the ends together to create a loop of elastic. Here's the elastic sewn into a loop and then next up you'll just pull it so that it pulls back into the waistband and then you can pin your little two inch opening that you left. Pin that shut and then you can take that to your sewing machine, sew it shut, and then you'll finish this uh, waist seam using whatever uh, seam finish you've been doing on this project. Now we're going to prepare our waistband to be top stitched. So what you need to do is stretch it out a few times to make sure that the elastic is distributed evenly around your shorts. You don't want it like all kind of you know folded up in the front or in the back. And once you have it kind of distributed evenly, you're gonna place some pins vertically just around your waistband. And this will hold this distribution for us while we are top stitching our elastic. So we're back at the sewing machine to give you a little bit more of visual aid on how this step is sewn. Uh, so the waistband is top stitch a quarter inch from the top and a quarter inch from the bottom. So we're going to start on the top. We'll be stitching a quarter inch from the edge. You want to lower your presser foot and your needle and then you'll pull your elastic flat so that um, when you top stitch there aren't you're not sewing over folds 
and you kind of sew between the pins that you placed. Those are holding, you know, the elastic in place inside of your waistband and you just kind of pull gently. You're not pulling the project through the sewing machine, but you are pulling the elastic flat and you're going to stitch all the way around your project. And then you are going to do the tops, the second row of top stitching, which is a quarter inch from that waist seam. So you'll set up your project again under your presser foot. You can lower it and then lower the needle. Just make sure that you're not starting like puckering your fabric or sewing like a little pleat when you start. So you get everything set up and then again you're just stretching your waistband flat as you sew around your waistband. And so again you'll sew all the way around and then you'll have two rows of top stitching and a little casing for your drawstring to run through. Once you've finished top stitching you'll want to give your waistband a press with a steamy iron and that'll kind of even everything out and make it look wonderful and then we're done sewing all that's left is to put the drawstring in so just like you did with the elastic you'll attach a safety pin to the end and then you'll just kind of inch it through um, starting at one buttonhole and coming out the other buttonhole and then you're done you got a cute pair of shorts and here are the final shorts on Feel free to leave any questions you have in the comments below and head over to the website and get your copy of the sports shorts. And if you do make them, tag us on Instagram, hashtag Friday sports shorts. And yeah, I hope you have fun sewing and we'll see you next time.